Alright, so in this problem, I have x to the power of x plus 1 is equal to x. So to solve this, I'm going to start by subtracting x on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I'm left with x to the power of x plus 1 minus x is equal to 0. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So x to the power of x plus 1, this is going to be equal to x to the power of x times x to the power of 1. Now I have this minus x is equal to 0. Now if I factor out x, I get x times x to the power of x minus 1 is equal to 0. So now this gives me two equations. I have x is equal to 0, and I have x to the power of x minus 1 is equal to 0. So x equals 0. This is already a solution. Now for x to the power of x minus 1 equals 0, I'm going to add 1 on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I get x to the power of x is equal to 1. Now, because x has to be the same number, we obviously know that, well, what number to the power of self is equal to 1? That's going to be 1, right? Because 1 to the power of 1 is equal to itself. So x is equal to 1. And there's no, actually, there's no other number that, when you take the power of itself, is going to equal 1. S meaning, x equals 1 is the only solution to this equation. So now, to check, the original equation was x to the power of x plus 1 is equal to x. So x to the power of x plus 1 is equal to x. And our first solution was 0. So if I plug in 0, I get 0 to the power of 0 plus 1 is equal to 0. Now 0 plus 1 is 1, so I have 0 power to the power of 1 equals 0. And 0 to the power of any number is itself, so I get 0 equals 0. Now to check for 1, I get 1 to the power of 1 plus 1 is equal to 1. 1 plus 1 is 2, so I get 1 to the power of 2 is equal to 1. And 1 to the power of any number itself, so 1 equals 1. Alright, so in this problem, I have x to the power of x is equal to 100. So I'm going to first start by taking the natural log, or ln, on both sides. So I have ln x to the power of x is equal to ln 100. Now, if I have something in the form ln a to the power of b, I can move this exponent and b to the front. So this is going to equal b times ln a. So for ln x to the power of x, I can move x to the front, and I'm going to get x times ln x is equal to ln 100. Now ln 100, that's the same thing as ln of 10 squared. So I get x times ln x is equal to ln 10 squared. And if I have something in the form ln a to the power of b, again, I can move 2 to the front. So I get x times ln x is equal to 2 times ln 10. Now, there's something called the W Lambert function. And if I take the W Lambert function of something in the form e to the power of, sorry, a times e to the power of a, this is going to equal a. So this is basically what the W Lambert function is. So if there's something in the form a to the power of a times e to the power of a, that's going to equal a. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to rewrite x here as e to the power of ln of x because e, the e and ln cancel out and this results in simply x. So I'm just going to rewrite x as e to the power of ln of x and I have this times ln x is equal to 2 times ln 10. And now this is in the form a times e to the power of a. So now if I take the w Lambert function on both sides,
This results in ln x equaling w of 2 times ln 10. And now if I take e to the power of both sides, I get e to the power of ln x is equal to e to the power of w of 2 ln 10. And e to the power of ln x, that's going to equal x. So I get x is equal to e to the power of w of 2 times ln 10. And this is equal to 3.597285, which rounds up to 3.597. So this is my answer to this problem. All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of 2x plus x to the power of x is equal to 20. So to solve this, I'm going to first rewrite x to the power of 2x as x to the power of x to the power of 2. And I can do this because if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m to the power of n. So now... I'm going to let the variable y equal x to the power of x. So now I have y squared plus y is equal to 20. Now from here, I'm going to subtract 20 on both sides. So then these two cancel out. And I'll be left with y squared plus y minus 20 is equal to 0. Now, y over here, I can rewrite this as 5y minus 4y. And now, the reason I did this is because I can factor by grouping. So for y squared plus 5y, I'm going to factor out y. So now I have y times y plus 5. And from negative 4y minus 20, I'm going to factor out negative 4. So I have negative 4 times y plus 5. Now from the entire equation, I'm going to factor out y plus 5. So now I have y plus 5 times y minus 4 is equal to 0. So this actually gives me two equations. I get y plus 5 is equal to 0, and I get y minus 4 is equal to 0. So y minus 4 equals 0, y is equal to 4, and for y plus 5 equals 0, y equals negative 5. Now, because this is negative, this is not possible, because notice how y is equal to x to the power of x. So you can't take the power of a negative number and make it positive. So I get 4 is equal to x to the power of x. And we have to find a number that works out for this. Well, the only number that is small enough is 2. So x equals 2 because 2 to the power of 2 is 4. So 2 is my answer to this equation.